Welcome to Electron Online. Here's another way in which we can look at integration and integrals. In this case, we're going to deal with the definite integral, and I'll show you in just a moment what we mean by that. With that, here we have a, a graph that represents the acceleration of an object. Notice that when time is equal to zero, the object is already accelerating at five meters per second. So let me go ahead and put the number five there. You can see that as time goes by, the acceleration increases over time, and after five seconds. Based upon the equation right here, we can see the acceleration as a function of time is equal to 0.5 times t plus 5. So it starts out when time is equal to 0, the acceleration is 5 meters per second, and for each second it increases by 0.5 meters per second. And I should say per second square, of course, because that's acceleration per second squared. So after 5 seconds, the let's say this could be a car, would then be accelerating at 7.5 meters per second squared. Now, what we can do here is we can find what the velocity would be after a certain amount of time by realizing that the velocity is the integral of the acceleration. Another way of looking at it, the integral of the acceleration will be the area underneath this graph. So this area right here represents the velocity of the car as time goes by, assuming that when time is equal to zero, the initial velocity was equal to zero. So the question is, what will be the velocity of the car after 5 seconds? So for that we're going to take the integral and then later on we're going to check our answer by calculating the area underneath this curve to show that they should indeed be equal to each other. So velocity is equal to the integral of the acceleration and since the acceleration is equal to this equation we can say that it's the integral of 0 0.5 times t plus 5 times dt. We always have to have the dt there because it's the opposite of the derivative and the derivative that's where the dt comes from and we'll see later on how that works. Also this is going to be what we call a definite integral because we're going to evaluate that integral from a starting point to a finishing point. We start at t equals 0 and then we end up at t is equal to 5. So the limits of our integrations we call them is from t equals 0 to t equals 5. That's how we can evaluate the velocity after 5 seconds. That's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the velocity after 5 seconds. We take the integral of the acceleration function and we evaluate it between those two values. We'll show you in just a moment how to do that. First, the integral. Again, v is equal to, let's add one to the exponent, 0 0.5 times t squared. Set it to the first power, it's now to the second power, divided by the new exponent plus 5 times t to the first power, because we had t to the 0 power there before, so now we have 5t to the first power, and normally we would add a constant of integration. But since we have limits there, the constant of integration will disappear by itself. We'll show you later how to do that, but here we can simply say when we have a definite integral with limits on the integral, we can just put the numbers there, like this and this, and we do not have to put in a constant of integration. How do you evaluate the result here? What this means is that we want to plug in the upper limit, 5 for the value t, and subtract when we plug in the lower limit. Let me show you what that looks like. So the velocity after 5 seconds is equal to 0 0.5, that's a 0, 0 0.5 times, we plug in the upper limit, that would be 5 squared, divided by 2, and this is indeed a 2, plus 5 times 5. So what we did here is we plug in the upper limit. Each case we see a t, and then we subtract from that when we plug in the lower limit. Of course, you can see when I plug in the 0 there, I get 0 0.5 times 0 squared, divided by 2 plus 5 times 0. And of course, that simply disappears because 0 times anything is 0, and this would then be the result of our integral. v is equal to 5 squared is 25, Divided by, divided by 2, divided by 2, that's divided by 4. 25 divided by 4 would be 6.25, plus 5 times 5 is 25, so that's for a total of 31.25. After 5 seconds, the car should be moving at 31.25 meters per second, so the units would be meters per second for velocity. All right, let's see if we got that correct. Let's go back over here and evaluate the area of this graph right here. We can divide this into two regions. We have a rectangle. That rectangle is 5 by 5, so that's 5 high, 
and 5 white. So 5 times 5, that's equal to 25. That's the area of this portion. And now we need to add the area of the triangle. Triangle, notice that it has a height of 2.5, a height in this direction of 5. And so the area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height, 1 half the base, which is 5, times the height, which is 2.5. So that would be 2.5, that's 12 and a half, divided by 2 is 6.25. So that's the area of this portion of the graph. If we add those two together, notice 25 plus 6.25 does indeed add up to 31.25, which shows that if we take the function, in this case the acceleration is a function of time, and we take the integral of that function, we get the velocity, and then if we want to know what the velocity is, after 5 seconds, we plug in the limits of integration as we call them. We put in the upper limit here, we put in the lower limit there. When we take the integral, we add 1 to the exponent on every variable. So this is 0.5t squared divided by the new, new exponent plus 5 times t to the first power divided by 1. And then we put in the limits. When we plug in the upper limit, we get 31.25. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. And so this tells us that after 5 seconds, the car is moving at 31.25 meters per second. And as we said before, the integral of a function like this is equal to the area underneath the curve. When we calculate the area of the rectangle and the, the area of the triangle, we add it together, we get the exact same value, showing that, in essence, when you take the integral of a function, you're finding the area underneath this curve. And depending upon what the function is, that area will have a particular meaning. In the case of the, of the function being an acceleration, the area underneath an acceleration curve is equal to the velocity of that object. And that's why the area here equals the velocity of the object after 5 seconds. So there's another way of looking at integration. Integration tells us something about the function. In this case, if the function is acceleration, it tells us the velocity. And there's many more examples where the acceleration has some meaning. And if you, once you figure out how to do the acceleration, then you can find the meanings in those functions by doing that acceleration. And that's what we mean by integrating and integration.